Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday, February 7, 2025. Here follow the solutions to problem 222 by Keith Norman. Many of you have the right answers. All of you have that the surface of the rotating liquid is a paraboloid. But many of you also have the frequency, the maximum frequency, so that no water runs out. If you have questions about Keith's solutions, I would say write him on my channel and ask him. Don't ask me. Solution is his. And as always, it's a super solution. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 222. And it's actually a, a problem I suggested some time ago when Walter was asking Eugen and myself for uh, a few suggestions. Uh, quite a well-known problem, I think. We have a circular beaker that is uh, f part filled with water and it's going to be rotated about its central axis. Uh, the radius of the beaker is capital R. Uh, the height of the edge of the beaker, top of the beaker, above the water is H. Um, this is a cross section of it at rest. And as we rotate it with some angular velo velocity omega, we're going to get some curve uh, uh, of the surface of the water. And eventually that curve will become so great that water will reach the top of the beaker and uh, flow out of the beaker. Um, so, uh, it is important to note that omega changes very, very slowly. Um, this is so that viscosity and friction uh, in the water and friction with the beaker will cause all the water to rotate with the same uh, omega, the same angular velocity. If we don't have this restriction, this will be a nightmare of a problem to solve because we'd have complicated flows of water coming down here, along here and up there, all the while, while this is rotating with an ever increasing omega. So we do need omega to change very slowly um, so that we can make this essential assumption that makes the problem um, straightforward to solve. Okay, now because I consider a constant omega everywhere, I can now almost consider this as a solid rotating. It's not quite a solid because we do have pressure to consider, but essentially um, we've got a, a uh, the water is not changing in shape, which is crucial. So I can now consider a horizontal disk uh, of water, and here it is in plan view, and within that I consider at a radius r a small mass delta m with a height of water h above it and a thickness of the disk delta h. So I consider this small element, which must be rotating, um, and the whole disk is rotating effectively like a solid disk. Um, so I say for a small element of water at radius r from the centre, delta pressure, the pressure difference from the uh, outer edge and the inner edge, uh, must provide the necessary centripetal force for circular motion. So delta P times delta A, uh, where delta A is delta H R delta theta, uh, will give you um, the necessary force. Um, I'm slightly simplifying the keen amongst you will spot that is not rectangular but when you actually do the the limit take the limit later on um, it all it all sorts itself out and the higher order terms uh, in in the calculus can be ignored so I basically get force here delta P times delta H times R delta theta equals now this is um, simple circular motion this is the mass delta M omega squared R um, Walter covers all of this in his 801 lectures, so that should be no problem. And the only thing here is I'm now saying we're dealing with a fluid, so we've got um, a pressure. 
that has to provide that, uh, that centripetal force. So simplifying all of this, cancelling the terms, uh, etc., and taking a limit, I can say that delta P uh, d dP by dr equals omega squared r, um, which gives me this expression here when I integrate. Um, so I now see that P varies as R squared, which is what I wanted to find. Um, the constant of integration simply is uh, determined by the height uh, that I'm chosen here. So if, if I had a, uh, if I'd chosen a, a layer of a disk lower down, that C would be bigger. Um, uh, so as you can see, uh, P equals rho G H, uh, and I simply equate the two, and so I can say H varies as R squared. It is a paraboloid. Okay, now to find the uh, omega max. To find omega max, I consider the volume of air above the water, which will be constant. Uh, it'll be constant until some water leaks out. So initially, I have got uh, this shape here for the volume of air, and at some time when water starts to leak out, it will be uh, a paraboloid. So what I need to do is equate that volume to that volume. Okay, initially I need to find the equation of the curve. I know it's a, uh, um, a parabola, uh, but I, I don't know exactly the, the, the details, but I can find the details from knowing that uh, at the maximum radius of the beaker, there will be a maximum height for the parabola, which I've called h omega max. So I work out all of this. Um, I now have, I, I, I assume that the parabola has a form uh, h equals a r squared, where a is some constant to find. Uh, I find that constant from this, this uh, condition here. Uh, and I can now say that the volume is simply integrating uh, standard uh, solid of revolution, for those of you who have done calculus. Um, if you haven't uh, done this in your calculus classes, and I know there's at least one commenter uh, on the problem said he couldn't solve this, what you do um, is you consider disks, uh, circular disks, and then you simply integrate them up. These disks vary according to uh, the radius r, so I've got pi r squared for the one disk, and I integrate from zero to h omega max, which is from here to here, integrating along the y-axis this time, I get that expression here, which is easy enough to solve on the next page. Uh, I substitute in values um, for the formula for the parabola that I'd got, and I can get to this condition here for the volume. And I note from initial conditions that that must equal uh, this value here. So h omega max is now 2h. So the maximum pressure difference between the center and the edge of the beaker, if I consider the height, will be rho g h omega max, which I know is going to be 2 rho g h. But this is also going from the center of the beaker to the edge of the beaker, a half omega squared max r squared from the previous calculation we did on an earlier page. So I can equate the two and I get this term here or rearranging omega max equals this, which is what quite a few of you got. Um, not the easiest problem to do, not the hardest Walter's done, but far from the easiest problem. So uh, it's nice to see quite a few people uh, getting the right answer. Thank you.